Good evening. Welcome to our Monday Thursday service. Uh, just a couple things as we prepare to celebrate this evening. Uh, we are adding back in the song that is sung during the distribution. So that sort of went away with all the COVID restrictions. But tonight we're going to sing hymn 310, I Come Savior to Your Table. So um, while that's going on, we'll sing it. And I think we'll split everyone up into four tables, if you sort of know what I mean. So we'll, we'll have the ites, and, and then Cindy and Dan be the first table, and then Marlon and, and those behind him, that'll be a table. And then I think uh, we'll have Brian and then Pastor Smith, and Betty will be a table, and then Clice and Marlene. And you upstairs, just come down whenever. So, so we'll have four tables. Follow me. So, and during that, we'll sing sing those. Uh, just one other thing: as the service uh, concludes, we will have the stripping of the altar, and as that's after that is completed, the service ends at that. There is no blessing. There is no final hymn. It just it ends, and it seems abrupt and it seems unusual, which is meant to. It's reminding us of what our Lord was going through. So, just a reminder that the, the altar script, I finished reading, the service is over. So, keep that in mind. And then we leave quietly, there is no music, and then come tomorrow, Good Friday, we reassemble at 7, quietly, there is no music, and we begin our Good Friday service. So, uh, just a couple of those things to, to be aware of. We'll begin our worship this evening with our first hymn. That's hymn 120, What Wondrous Love Is This?
this Latin season, we have heard again how our Lord walked the path of suffering, which led him to the cross for our salvation. We have also heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and one another. This is the struggle to which we were committed at baptism. God's forgiveness and the power of his spirit to amend our lives continue with us because of his love for us in Jesus, our Savior. Within the family of the church, God never wearies of giving peace and new life. In the absolution, we receive forgiveness as from God himself. This absolution we should not doubt, but firmly believe that our sins are thus forgiven before God in heaven. For it comes to us in the name and by the command of our Lord. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other, as Jesus became our servant. In Holy Communion, the members of Christ's body participate most intimately in his love, remembering our Lord's Last Supper with his disciples. We eat the bread and drink the cup of this meal. Together, we receive the Lord's gift of his body and blood for forgiveness and participate in that new covenant that makes us one with him and one another. The Lord's Supper is the promise of the great banquet we will share with all the faithful when our Lord returns, the joyous culmination of our reconciliation with God and each other. Let us confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Please rise. We join together. Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not loved you with all my heart in what I have done and left undone. I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. I have not loved my brothers and sisters as myself. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. I am truly sorry for my sins. I repent of them. I beg for your mercy, O Lord. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died for us. Cleanse me from my sins. Release me from my guilt. Grant me your Holy Spirit to amend my sinful life. The Almighty God has been merciful to us and has sent his Son to die for all. For his sake, God forgives our sins and calls us from darkness to his marvelous light. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven us and reconciled us to God and has promised us the power to forgive and love each other. Relying on his promise, therefore, be reconciled with one another. Brothers and sisters, May the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, in our words, and in our actions. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give us your true body and blood as a remembrance of your suffering and death on the cross. Grant us so firmly to believe your words and promise that we may always partake of this sacrament to our eternal good. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord told Moses and Aaron this in the land of Egypt. This month is to the beginning, is to be the beginning of your calendar. It is to be the first month of the year for you. Tell the entire Israelite community that on the tenth day of this month, they are to take a lamb or a young goat for themselves, according to their father's households, one lamb per household. But if the household is too small for a whole lamb, 
then that person and his neighbor next door to him must select one, based on the number of people. Determine what size lamb is needed according to how much each person will eat. Your lamb must be unblemished, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or the goats. You are to keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly of the Israelite community is to slaughter the lambs at sunset. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where they eat the lamb. That night they shall eat the meat that has been roasted over a fire along with unleavened bread. They shall eat it with bitter herbs. Do not eat it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over a fire, with its head, its legs, and its internal organs. You shall not leave any of it until the morning. Whatever remains until the morning, you shall burn in the fire. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, ready for travel, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For on that night I will pass through the land of Egypt. I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both people and animals. Against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. There will be no plague among you to destroy you when I strike down the land of Egypt. This day shall be a memorial for you, and you are to celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you must celebrate it as a permanent regulation. The word of the Lord. We join together in singing the psalm of the day. It's Psalm 116. It's on page 107. Page 107, Psalm 116. We'll join in singing the psalm. Our second lesson is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. 
The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a communion of the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a communion of the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we, who are many, are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. The word of the Lord. As often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel this evening is from St. Mark, chapter 14. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and there a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Wherever he enters, tell the owner of the house that the teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. His disciples left and went into the city and found things just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining and eating, Jesus said, Amen, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and said to him one by one, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread with me in the dish. Indeed, the Son of Man is going to go just as it has been written about him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would, be, would have been better for that man if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. When he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. They all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is poured out for many. Amen, I tell you. I will certainly not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. After they sang a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. We continue with our next hymn, The Death of Jesus Christ Our Lord, in 135.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God's word for our consideration this evening is from our second lesson. That was from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. It said this, The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a communion of the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a communion of the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we, who are many, are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. So far, God's word. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Holy Supper, which was instituted on this night, nearly 2,000 years ago, goes by several different names. Sometimes we refer to it as the Lord's Supper. Because it reminds us that it is the Lord who instituted, who prepared this meal for us, his brothers and sisters. Sometimes we refer to this Holy Supper as the sacrament of the altar. Not because it's a sacrifice of Christ, but because it reminds us of the sacrifice that Jesus gave of himself on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, our sins. Sometimes it's called the Eucharist. And Eucharist just simply means a word of thanks. So we celebrate the Lord's Supper as a meal of thanksgiving. One of the most common names of the sacrament of Lord's Supper, is called Holy Communion. It's one that we Lutherans like to use quite often. So, communion is something that has something which is shared in common. There's a partnership, there's a fellowship, there's a union that is taking place. Within Holy Communion, there's several different unions which take place. There's the union of the bread and the wine with the body and the blood. There is a communion between the communicant, the one receiving the bread and the wine and the body and the blood, and Christ. And there's a communion between the fellow communicants, that we are expressing our unity of faith. Paul begins by stating this, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a communion of the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a communion of the body of Christ? Paul is conveying to us this very close connection that exists between the bread and the wine and the body and the blood. Martin Luther, when he tries to describe this very unique union, says of the body and blood that it is in, with, and under the bread and the wine. He's trying to capture that mystery, that unique joining that exists when the elements are consecrated and we receive them. So there's this special union that's taking place. We heard in our gospel reading, Mark records the very words of Jesus. As Jesus took the bread, he said, this is my body. As Jesus takes the cup filled with wine, he says, this is my blood. This is the special union that's taking place between bread and wine and body and blood. This is part of that holy communion. The Lord's Supper, then, is more than just receiving this little piece of bread. It's more than just drinking this little drink of wine. When you eat the bread and the wine, you are receiving the very body and blood of Christ. This is what you're getting when you partake of the Lord's Supper. 
of the Holy Communion. And you receive those elements, bread, wine, body, and blood, for the forgiveness of sins. It's reminding us of what Jesus did on Calvary. He gives his body, he sheds his blood for our forgiveness, to atone for the sins of the world. This is what we're receiving then. If Christ had not given his body, if Christ had not shed his blood, there would be no forgiveness. This is part of that Holy Communion. Because then we're receiving the true body and blood of Christ, we are also having a special union with the Lord. When we partake of the Holy Communion, we are becoming part of the body of Christ. We are receiving him into ourselves. We are receiving the very body and blood of Christ in us. There's a special union that is taking place as we partake of Holy Communion. There's a very personal assurance then that the Lord is giving each one of you as you receive the bread and the wine. No one else can eat for you. No one else can drink for you. You can only do that for yourself. So the Lord comes to you and he tells you, I have given you personally my body. I have given for you my blood. This is a personal assurance for each one of you that your sins are forgiven, that Christ has paid for them. This is one of the blessings of the Holy Communion that we receive. So with that assurance, with that special bond that now exists between us and God, we have this union with Him, we have the comfort of knowing day to day that the Lord is with us. He's part of us. We are His. He is ours. We have received him. We have received his very body and blood. And he is with us. He cannot forsake us. He cannot leave us. Because he's part of us. We are one in him. So that when we're facing trials and hardships and sorrows, we go back to remember what did I receive in Lord's Supper when I was eating that bread and drinking that wine? Ah, I was receiving Christ. I was receiving his blood. I was receiving his body. There's that special bond now. This is a reminder of God's love that's being poured out on us again and again and again. Reminding us how he gives us his mercy, his grace, so that we are now one with him. We're part of the body of Christ. The Lord will be with us all through our life, and he'll be with us into eternity. This is the assurance that we receive. This is that close bond now that we have with God through the bread and the wine, the body and the blood. Paul reminds us in these words from Romans, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I am persuaded that neither death nor life shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the bond we have now. This is the love that cannot separate, be separated from us and God. Finally, in the Lord's Supper, there's another communion. A communion of fellowship, of close partnership that we are expressing with each other. That we have a unity of faith, that we have an agreement in the teachings of the Lord. We are saying we are one. And we take that seriously, that we are one in faith. 
one together, one body. Paul says, because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of this one bread. We have, as brothers and sisters, this unique fellowship with each other. Because we are part of the same body of Christ, how can we not help but love each other? How can we not help but forgive each other? We're part of the same body. How can we not but encourage each other and bear with each other's weakness and pray for one another? We're all part of the same body. That's the unique fellowship that we express when we receive Holy Communion. Luther had an interesting way of trying to describe this aspect of the Lord's Supper. He says, think of this. Think of how before the bread is processed, before the wheat is made, it's all these hundreds and thousands of individual kernels of wheat. And then they're all ground together, mixed, and you have one loaf of bread. Or the grapes. You have hundreds and thousands of these individual grapes, but then they're crushed and they form the cup of wine. We are all individuals, but we're brought together in unity in the body of Christ. We are one. We're expressing that unity of faith as we receive Holy Communion. On this special night, we remember the institution of the Lord's gift of Holy Communion. We're reminded of that unique partnership that exists, that union that takes place between the bread and the wine and the body and the blood. We're receiving the very body and blood of Christ. We remember that unique communion that we have with our God, with our Lord, with our Savior. It's personal. He comes to each of us. And we remember that unique fellowship that we have with each other. We're one. We're one in Christ. So tonight, as we celebrate Monday Thursday, we remember that holy communion which we share. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith Christ Jesus. Amen. Please remain standing. We continue with prayer. We read responsibly the prayer on page 6. Lord God, Heavenly Father, author of the everlasting covenant and giver of the cup of salvation, we gather in your courts to offer you our sacrifice of thanksgiving for fulfilling your promise to establish a new covenant through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We give you humble and hearty thanks. As our Lord Jesus Christ gave thanks to you when he broke the bread, as he gave thanks to you when he took the cup, we also give you thanks. Precious Savior, both priest and offering, Awe and wonder fill our hearts as we partake of your body broken for us and your blood shed for us. We praise you, bless you, and adore you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our poverty of righteousness, we have nothing to offer. Without your tremendous sacrifice, we would still be in our sins. But through the sacrament of the New Testament, we are assured that our iniquities are forgiven and our sins are no longer remembered. O Holy Spirit, dwell within us as we remember our Lord's death in this sacrament. Enter our hearts to strengthen our faith and fill us with gratitude for your great mercy. Move us to encourage one another in love and to do good works. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. As our Lord served his disciples by washing their feet, so may we also humbly serve one another. Help us live our lives as sacrifices of thanksgiving 
to him who first loved us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be with them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the ages to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the hymn, Draw Near and Take the Body of the Lord, hymn 309. Continue with the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up on the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right, that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought this the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil who overcame us by a tree would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May the eating and drinking of Christ's true body and true blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and for life everlasting. Be at peace. is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all of your sins. May this eating and drinking of Christ's true body and true blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Be at peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the remission of all of your sins. May this eating and drinking of Christ's true body and true blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and for life everlasting. Be at peace, your sins are forgiven. Eating and drinking of Christ's body and true blood, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and for life everlasting. Be at peace, your sins are forgiven. Continue with the song of Simeon. is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
My groaning does nothing to save me. My God, I call out by day, but you do not answer. I call out by night, but there is no relief for me. Yet you are seated as the Holy One, praised by Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and they were rescued. They trusted you and they were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They sneer. They shake their heads. They say, trust in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. But you are the one who brought me out of the belly. You made me trust when I was at my mother's breast. I was cast on you from the womb. From the belly of my mother, you have been my God. Do not be distant from me, for distress is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls from Bashan encircle me. Enemies open their mouths wide against me like a lion that tears its prey and roars. Like water, I am poured out. All my bones are pulled apart. My heart has become like wax. It has melted in the middle of my chest. My strength is dried up like broken pottery, and my tongue is stuck to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me, a band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be distant. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen, you have answered me. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Stand in awe of him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised nor detested the affliction of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him. But when he cried out to him, he heard, You are the source of my praise. In the great congregation I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who fear him. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. May he live in your hearts forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before you. For the kingdom belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will eat and bow down. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, descendants will serve him. For generations people will be told about the Lord. They will come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet to be born, because he has done it. The word of the Lord.